More beautiful moments streak by us in life than we could ever possibly remember. And we do our best through thousands and thousands of moments to capture what it is that defines them. We want to live that story, to capture it, bottle it up, and bring it with us for the rest of time. And yet that elusive task proves challenging every single time. So what is it? What is it that we have to do to make a photo that matters, that brings us into that moment with vivid clarity? The same question will always come up. How do I make photos that are memorable, that last, that people care about? And we look for all kinds of different answers to it, right? I mean, we look at gear. If I buy this lens or this camera, can I take a photo that's this much better? And it finally crosses that magical threshold where people will care. And the answer is no. So then we dive into technique. We learn composition, photo weighting, narrative building, all these different things. Maybe all of that, maybe making a technically beautiful photo, maybe that'll do it. That'll make a photo that's memorable. And I still think the answer is really no. And then finally, we look to where we're taking photos. If I just went here where people have been so interested, maybe then I'd finally capture a photo that's beautiful. Kirkjufell in Iceland, if I just make it there, I've got photos that people will remember. If I just go to Namibia and find the sand dunes, I'll get the photos that people care about. The answer is still no. So the question then becomes, what do you do to make a photo that's memorable? How do you take photos that people will care about? And I do think I have somewhat of an answer. And this is after thinking about my own work for years and years, after hundreds of thousands of photos, digging in and trying to figure out what is it that's actually made a difference. Because quite frankly, the subjects I've been passionate about haven't changed all that much. So what is it that has changed? What is it that makes a photo more memorable? Well, I think the answer is actually somewhat simple, but in practice, it's hard to accomplish. The answer is the removal of as much barrier between the viewer and the actual moment. So think about the fact that you as the photographer are an element between the viewer and the narrative. You and then your camera and then your lens and then your style and the way you ultimately compose your photo, quite literally the air. I, everything is there in between that moment and how it's being viewed either on that printed photo or that digital representation. So we have to look to ways to eliminate as much of that barrier as possible. Now I do honestly believe there are many great ways to go about doing this, but there are three that stand out to me as I've used them extensively and they've worked for me. The first one is to create three dimensionality in your photograph such that your viewer can be brought into the depth of it. So one great way to do this is through environmental framing. Something like the walls of a porthole as you're looking out of a ship towards the mountains or the ice on either side of an ice crack looking out at a mountainside. These kinds of environmental contexts so close to the frame create this sense that you're peering into that moment. This added sense of depth ultimately allows people to start to imagine and it starts to let them think about that moment more vividly than if it's a snapshot without that sort of depthful context. It's generally quite simple to point our cameras at a scene and capture it, but to ultimately capture it in a way that makes it memorable or makes it interesting or compelling to a viewer in a way that makes them care about it, we have to start thinking about which elements they ultimately would want to interact with. They may not want to interact with this mountain in the distance, but if you give them a visual pathway to follow, then ultimately they're interacting with the process of that photo. They're interacting with the way they can move through it, with the way they can visualize themselves in that scene. And suddenly that big, beautiful mountain in the distance, it's not just defined by its beauty, it's defined by the way it's being perceived by the viewer.
This idea of creating depth in an image, of creating a sense of three-dimensionality, ties very well into the next technique of getting closer to your subject. It's really ubiquitous in photojournalism to bring the camera very close to the subject, to feel that sense of vulnerability that the subject is feeling. And the same applies in nearly every genre of photography. If you can get yourself closer to even some point of context in the frame, whether it's the subject, a leading line, or any other element that ultimately helps define the narrative at play, you're giving the viewers a better opportunity to feel that scene and to feel engrossed in that scene. Coming closer to that subject is an effort that ultimately breaks down the abstract nature of a scene that's somewhat inherent when you flatten it and when you perceive it from a distance. And while this might be easier said than done, this effort to get close also puts you into a vulnerable position that will emanate out of your photograph. In something like a mountain landscape or an adventure landscape, getting close to your subject means moving quickly or putting yourselves into positions that may feel awkward uncomfortable or even dangerous, but by making that effort and by putting those fleeting feelings and those challenging emotions into your photograph as a result of putting yourself into that situation, your photos pick up a visceral nature to them. They start to glow with that sort of energy that you were creating, that you were finding and capturing. So get close to your subject, seek it out and go the extra distance to become engrossed in that scene, to envelop yourself in that scene, because ultimately that's what allows your viewer to become enveloped in that scene. And then they can become interested, their imaginations can run, and they become transfixed. Now I also want to challenge you to consider your vision right now, in this very moment. When you focus closely, when you try to see as close as you can, do you see any kind of a glittering grain to your vision? Do you see any kind of motion when you swivel your head left or right, up and down? These things are the natural functions of your eyes. This is how your brain perceives what's in front of you. So when you're creating photographs and when you're trying to create photographs that people care about, when you're trying to eliminate the barrier between the actual moment and all the digital processes that go between it and when the viewer actually sees it, how can you minimize those such that the final product still feels akin to the way you saw it in that moment? Well, one of the most compelling ways to do that is to stop fixating on the right or wrong way to use the exposure triangle. When we start to slow our shutter down and introduce a sort of blur or a motion to our frames, that can be a more accurate way of perceiving a scene such as a surfer flying along a beautiful break. Similarly, if we're late in the day and we have some moment that's happening that's blurred, that's grainy, well, that's actually how we're going to see it in real life. Our eyes can't just see in the dark, right? And if we fake that, it doesn't necessarily feel as real. Now, I'm not gonna say that you should completely avoid the advantages of digital technology, but just consider with your camera and with your photographs, whether it's always the right call to go for clinical perfection. Sometimes those broken elements in the exposure triangle, those imperfections are actually what makes a photo feel more possible, more real for the viewer. A little bit of blur, a little bit of grain, a little lack of sharpness or an odd depth of field, those things can be much closer to how we viewed it in reality. And so therefore you're eliminating that gap between the photo and everything that went between it and the viewer. So, Consider those variables, reconsider the right way to use them, break the exposure triangle, and start to tell that story from a more natural perspective. On a very quick side note, you've likely seen in some of the clips in this video, me walking around with this bag. This is the Wotencraft 10 liter pilot bag. Um, basically, they sent this to me in return for some testing and its inclusion in a future video. I wanted to let you guys know about this because already after a few days, I'm really enjoying it and I'm looking forward to making a video about it. You guys can check it out on their website. I know for the holidays, they're running some, uh, basically some gift opportunities if you spend certain amounts of money. Uh, just generally speaking, it's a bag that's worth looking at and when I have more feedback, I'll absolutely put it together for a video.
When people ask me what is it that they can do to create better photographs, can they buy this lens, this camera, this plane ticket, this course, there are merits to all of those things, but ultimately I can't tell anybody with any degree of confidence that it'll allow them to take compelling photos or memorable photos because ultimately they have to learn how to eliminate that gap between the photo and the person viewing it. The closer you can bring those together, the more likely it is that the person viewing the photo, whether it's you down the line or your friends or your family or anybody else, the closer you can bring those two variables, the more likely it is that you can allow that person to run their imagination, to step into the frame, to feel all of the elements that make that photo beautiful. Give them that opportunity. It's a story that you want them to be a part of. That's what makes photography so beautiful. We're telling stories. We're capturing fleeting moments. Video is a beautiful thing because you capture this long sequence, but a photo has this unique challenge wherein you have one moment or perhaps a few moments to tell a full story and you leave all of the space on either side of those photos up to the imagination of the viewer. So the more you can do to eliminate that sense of fakeness and allow the possibility for the imagination to fill in the gaps, the closer you are to a photo that is truly compelling.